What's up ladies and gents? Today we are going to try to advance the timing on this 1990s UD 1800 uh, diesel truck I picked up a couple years ago for pretty cheap. It's got high mileage and it's really tired. It's a naturally aspirated straight inline six mechanically injected FE6. It's a Nissan FE6 motor. There's other variations of it. But it's, it's a mechanically injected older diesel with an inline six cylinder injection pump. It looks like a Bosch style or a P pump style kind of. I'll show it to you. Uh, it, it's been smoking white smoke, not a ton of white smoke, but it hasn't been running very hot, it hasn't been running hot enough. It's been running really cold. So I'm trying to diagnose that and nip it in the ass if I can, while I can, before it gets worse. If I continue to drive this with that white smoke, I will severely damage one of the pistons if I haven't already. So I'm going to show you exactly how I'm doing this. I've done a ton of research on the forums and stuff like that, and I think I've got it down. I've never advanced diesel injection timing before, so this might be a shit show. I think I figured it out though. At first things first, I've got the back end jacked up in the air. Just like that. Both tires up in the air. I've got a big, big pipe wrench on the drive shaft. And I've got the truck in fifth gear. So the truck is off and it is in fifth gear. And that's just so the drive shaft engages the engine. And basically, I can just spin the engine with this big pipe wrench it's actually pretty easy and it'll turn it right over see the fan moving up there see that yeah so that's pretty easy uh, I can get it exactly where I need this is the injection pump right here it's kind of bright out here I apologize for the bad picture hopefully you can see that old inline Bosch uh, maybe a type style injection pump or Toyota H2 style from what I've been reading. This is a, a diesel Kiki and somebody else took them over and bought the company. A couple guys online were calling it a Zexel pump too. I don't know if it's a Zexel or not or if it's that style. But anyway, right here there's a coupler that divides the rest of the engine because this is a gear driven pump. It runs off one of the camshafts and that's connected to a gear and then it drives this housing internally down here see it and on this housing here there's two nuts there's one nut here see i've marked it too prematurely one nut right here and another nut on the other side these are 14 millimeter and basically you loosen this nut and you loosen the other nut on the other side and then you can adjust this uh, a few degrees and you only want to go an eighth of an inch at a time literally a couple millimeters try it and drive it a couple millimeters try it and drive it so that's what i'm going to try to do today i'm going to try to advance this a couple millimeters at a time and see how the truck reacts if we can get the white smoke to clear up if not i'm going to do a compression test next and then I'm going to start looking at injectors too. I imagine these old mechanical injectors are probably not sealing correctly. So I'm going to look at them next and uh, see if I can do anything there. But I'm starting here. You know, this is kind of a cheat. If you're low on compression or your cylinders are wore out or your engine's just tired, according to what I've read and research, you can advance timing a little bit and it helps it you know it's it's like a quick fix it's it'll get you down the road it's not the right way to address your compression problems obviously your cylinder sleeves whatever needs replaced but it might get you you know a few more years out of your tired old truck all right i should be able you can see my sharpie marks there and i just accidentally spun this see that so the more this engine spins counterclockwise um, if we're looking from behind so it spins clockwise if we're looking at the front of it it spins this way so we want the injection pump we want to twist it to the right basically uh, more right of where it was if you understand what i'm talking about so i've got both of those nuts loosened up and 
there's my marks you can see my sharpie marks okay so we're right on my mark now and if I want to retard ah, that's way advanced if I want to retard I go this way and if I want to advance which I'm going to just literally less than a quarter of an inch at a time I'm gonna be very careful with this I'm gonna spin it this way see to the right so you can see my marks here I made a broad squiggly mark in one spot because I did a, a bunch of lines so I just wanted to make sure just in case I lost complete orientation or something sprung when I lose something up I just made that squiggly mark so I remember exactly where I was and you can see see my lines there they're not quite lined up they're like an eighth of an inch off I just tightened up these nuts and I got it set exactly where I want to try it first so just an eighth of an inch advance and tiny fractions at a time don't get the disease of more when you do this don't do big bangs at once you could screw something up seems more intimidating than it actually is super simple on this truck just two nuts 14 millimeter I'm gonna try that we're gonna start it up here in a few minutes and see hopefully if that uh, smoking problem improves at all I doubt this will fix it but it's worth a shot it's just the first thing on the checklist all right I've got everything torqued down tightened I got the cab back down we're gonna start it now and see if it starts how it runs if you're too far advanced you're gonna get a lot of black smoke. It's gonna idle lower and it'll have lower exhaust gas temperatures. So it'll basically, your exhaust will be lower temperature. If it's too far retarded, you're gonna have a whitish smoke and it'll probably idle higher with higher exhaust gas temperatures from my understanding. The exhaust is right back here by the fuel tank. That's where it's coming out. We'll see if this does anything at all. Um, let me give it a shot. Wish me luck. Seems to be running better, but it it's, I still have a little white smoke. I think I have less white smoke than I did before. And it just seems to be a little different in a good way. I can't tell though, and I, I don't want to speak too soon. You know, it could be worse. I gotta, I gotta drive it and see if I got more power. All right, here goes nothing. Yeah, there's quite a bit more power, wow. Wow. But I still have a ton of white smoke. I can see it in the mirror when I get on this thing. But man, there's there's more power. I can feel it. I wish you would quit tipping over. Like I got the tripod in here, it's really hard. Oh, that feels so much better. So I still have other problems to solve, but that gets me closer. And that's, that's really good when I'm making a, a, a good guesstimate, you know, because I have no idea what I'm doing. So when I guess in the right direction, it feels really good. And I'm definitely advancing the timing is the way to go on this tired old diesel. Crap! Awesome! Just got back. I don't see any white smoke now. There is no white smoke. The truck is still idling. I think I've solved this problem completely. Hang on. It is running so much better. It sounds better. It's got more torque. It's idling higher. And there's zero white smoke. Look. That's the exhaust. It's completely clear. <laughs> Holy shit. Excuse my language. That's... Wow. I think that was it. I'm still going to clean out my injectors. Um, I think I'm going to fill the line completely full of seafoam or try to clean them out, maybe get them pressure tested, but it's, yeah, there's no white smoke. Another great diagnostic tool, infrared heat thermometer gun with the laser. I'm just going to measure these manifolds. It's a log type manifold. One eighty five 
200. Around 200. 200. 200. 200. Oh my God, they're all the same temperature pretty much. This one's a little lower. Now I'm getting 200. Yeah, now I'm getting 200. This one here was really cold. It was always super cold. It was like at uh, 120 degrees when these ones would be at like 160. Now they're all the same. I'm thrilled right now. I think I just solved the problem. I don't know. It's very uh, hope inspiring, I guess, because I love taking a step in the right direction. I don't know if I'm going to advance it anymore. I don't know if I'm going to play with that. I might study more before I do just to make sure I can recognize and I know all the signs and symptoms of the timing too advanced or retarded really make sure I have my facts straight before I go playing with this I might talk to some people there's a guy who's been working with these for years he owned a few I'm gonna go talk to him he's down at the scrap yard there but I am so happy with that right now. Uh, if you don't do this and you're DIY like me, get yourself an infrared thermometer and check your manifolds just like I did. I highly recommend that. And remember, one sixteenth of an inch, one eighth of an inch, a couple, one, two millimeters at a time, advance or retard. Be very, very careful with that and take it for a drive every time. I know it's time consuming, but just be careful because you can mess your truck up. You know, you can mess your diesel engine up, whatever it is. I'm just so thrilled right now. I had to beg this truck to get to 55 miles an hour before. Like, I had it to the floor. And it would take, I should have done a 0 to 60 because it would take like 4 minutes empty to get to 60, 55 miles an hour. It, I had to beg it to get there. And now it just zips right up there to like 70 miles an hour. It's such a dramatic difference. A step in the right direction. There's still a lot of work to do. I want to take these injectors apart and clean them, get all that done. But that's it for today. You know, I hope you've got something out of this video. I hope it helps you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you've seen or heard something I didn't, because I don't know what I'm doing as, as much as I do with the gasoline engines. The diesels are still new to me. You know, I haven't had, I haven't owned them for years and worked on them. So there's a lot. If you can give me any information, I greatly appreciate it. And I appreciate you. And thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing and liking. If you're new here, check out the other videos. You might get something out of some of them. I really appreciate you either way returning. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you for keeping this tiny channel going until the next time. Be impeccable with your word. Don't do anything stupid. Do your best. Don't take anything personal. I'll see you on the next one.